So my name is Kasal Kiv. I'm a spoken word artist um, for Studio Revolt. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, 1980, I was born. 81. Uh, born in a refugee camp, Thailand, um, Kawadang. Um, was sent to the States at a year old. Um, long story short, lifestyle, growing up, being raised in the States. Got into a lot of trouble, 16, I was fighting a life sentence. Now, my idea is storytelling. The idea of storytelling, look at this place. Courage, education, globalization, stories. Amazing, inspirational. And this is a little bit of my story. 16, fighting a life sentence. Now, I'm gonna do some pieces for you, three pieces, and hopefully I'll tell you a backstory about them so you can know a little bit more about them. Um, now I want you to imagine yourself, 16, fighting a life sentence. Now jump to 19, solitary confinement, a year and a half. Now this first piece I'm gonna do is called Earthy, and I'll tell you why I wrote it even though I was in solitary confinement for a year and a half. I felt it in waves. Emotionally captured, I was raptured for days. Memory vividly rendering me amazed. I was kept in a haze. Like that first day you came my way, my heart flooded, my speech stuttered. I, 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 I was utterly dazed, but somehow I mustered the courage. And though I was nervous, I said what I had to say. Excuse me, miss, your smile is bliss. And I would really like to know your name. See, she smiled, and I sat, and those were our first exchange. So all went that night, if I could remember it right. We went on talking about family, friends, and life like we've known each other a lifetime before that night. So hours went by, you noticed, and the place was dwindling. The chemistry was kindling. The attraction was pop passion, man. You could feel the adrenaline intoxicated by your mere presence. I took drink after drink from your pure essence until I got lost in your earth colors. Got me thinking about your birth mother. Must be Mother Earth because you got that earth color. Earthy, so you're rich with life giving minerals that down to earth type intelligent and spiritual. See, I knew what off top when you talked about your upbringing, had it hard, but you kept on singing that jazzy sound Billy Holiday, Shy Day, Alicia Keys, Aaliyah, one in a million. Those are the feelings you had me feeling. So every word you're speaking is deeply heard. I'm that listen type girl, listen and observe, hard working when you need to get served, and I don't mind getting sweaty. See, I'm mentally prepared, counteract your move for move. I'm mentally there, vernacular, spectacular, street raised and self-taught. Not overly confident, but I walk that street ball. My swag's in the soul I carry. No, not the soul on my feet, but the soul that dares me. Push me to my limits, even if it scares me. So bear with me, bear witness. Our spirit is connected, intimately woven like ancient messages. Unbroken through the ages, we became faces, strange till fate intervened. I just happened to look up, and I was swimming in the eyes of a queen. See, if her skin tone was of a golden hue, hazelnut with a balcony view. I was lost in your sunset. We just met, but I'm sun drenched. That's how much light you brought with you. That's how much life you brought with you. Historically, culturally grounded. I was dumbfounded by your absolute roundness, because your take on the world is my exact duplicate. It's in need of a change, and that's the truth I spit. So on and on, we went on talking that night. We went on talking about family, friends, and life like we've known each other a lifetime before that night. So I wrote that piece during a really dark time in my life. But it was a female by the name of Kashawn Bradley. I had no one writing me. Family was doing their thing, and I was in solitary confinement, alone, going crazy. But she kept me company. You know, we shared ideas, we shared stories, we shared of our hopes and dreams and fears. So now when I look back on that time, I think of that piece. I think of that piece and I think, why, why, wow. That was a beautiful moment in a dark time. Now I want yourself to jump forward. That was 99, 2000, 2001. I got out of the hole. So I got out of the hole. Went to 2004. Corcoran State Prison. 
crazy place. Imagine yourself maybe twice as big as this room. 100 bunk beds, 200 warehoused. Violent. And I remember on the top bunk, towel around my neck, jacket on, boots on, strap tight, just in case something happens. Middle of the night, and I'm up. And I thought to myself, man, these are the moments in between the nights. I have to write this down. See, I want you to share to that storytelling that my form of spoken word saved my life, literally. It helped me, changed me, became my own movement. There are times in my life, moments in between the nights, where I've laid, bathed in my own grief. See, the streets are only memories, stories told with a glazy stare, knowing full well with a full heart I should be there, not here, but I am here, not there, but that's neither here nor there. See, I'm aware in these moments. I'm alone, cold in a zone, a part of a world where tragedies happen every day. See, I pray for peace, some type of solace, but release is six years away. So it's safe to say to that day comes, I'll be a vacant body, a hollow tomb, forced to witness man's doom. Meanwhile, echoes of my life keeps bouncing off my eyeballs. So what it seems seems like a dream, but I'm way off. That's me as a teen, and the scene takes off. What's replaces the face so I can hardly wait to embrace so much love. But love solely fades to hate. Resentment lends a hand to an untimely break. So late is the hour when I reach back and think back to what was ours, better yet what was mine. Because these are times in my life, moments in between the nights where I must reflect on what was lost and check in with my thoughts. Yeah, check in with my chips of sin. And this is the life that I bought. My thoughts keep going back. I can't help it. My thoughts keep going black. I can't help it. I keep getting these attacks at night when my mind wanders back, flipping memories and I can still see they're still fresh and intact. My conscience weighs on my back, regrets and shame weighs on my name like chains and I'm at a point in my life. I'm tired of these nights filled with empty silence and these days filled with senseless violence. So blinding of my thoughts when they rage behind my eyelids as they flutter, visions of my death within my iris and there I was laying in the gutters. So what was a quick glimpse of my demise remained shut to these eyes. Now what is visualized is a life I must rise to, dreading the moment where I must open my eyes to another day I must fight through the same nightmares I close my eyes to. Because these are times in my life, moments in between the nights where I must reflect on what was lost and check in with my thoughts, yeah, check in with my chips of sin. And this is the life that I bought. And sometimes, just sometimes, you wish you could die. And crying won't suffice, but you take it with a sigh. And roll to your side so the tear goes unnoticed from the eyes who deems it a weakness of those who can't cry. So here it is, all your whys and what is, what should have been, what should have happened, what your life's supposed to be if you never ran the streets. You was told to ease up on that gun clapping, but the money and fame was too enticing. Life behind bars wasn't that frightening, so your eyes are saddled on the fast life, the lights and glamour. But then it all came crashing down like a hammer correction, a gavel. A man in the black robe, 16 years old, 16 years, 85%, two strikes and off you go, another branded cattle. So here I am, trying to unravel the sequences of my life. What came first? What came last? Too much time has lapsed, eight years to be exact. So these are times in my life, moments in between the nights, where I must reflect on what was lost and check in with my thoughts. See, I've checked with my chips of sin. There's the life that I bought. 
That was written in Corker State Prison. They had three riots there. There's so many more horror stories I could tell you about. But I survived. I went through it. Hope, courage, in the face of adversity. See, courage ain't the absence of fear. It isn't. You have to face it. Believe that you can overcome. Believe that I can overcome anything. Third, last piece, I wanted to, why do I do what I do? John Ford, 2008, CRC, California Rehabilitation Center, one of the flagships of rehabilitation in the California prison system. Most of my time was spent on level four where there was no rehabilitation. But I was lucky enough to work my way down. And I came across a piece. Why do I write? Why? See, I write for men, women, and children. Anyone who felt alone, anyone who felt disowned, I write for the bones buried in the country I call home. I write for you, the listener, so listen up. Take a step back and imagine the bigger picture, because I write the real, so feel me. I write for inner city street kids, struggling to find their place in a world too concerned with race. I write for the moms and pop shops, struggling to stay atop, because the dope boys got the block and lock, can't compete with the drama. So I write soap operas about single mothers and brothers about the struggle and hustle, the bustle and city where empty bellies rumble like silent earthquakes. We shake hungry like young lions, redefine the odds, praying to God, Lord, give us the strength to carry on. So I write to redefine the stars. Nah, none of that Hollywood glitz and glam with them stones that shimmer and glimmer, but some of that earthy residue that comes through and when it's being true. So I write to the few, hoping I get trickled down to the masses. I want to spark the world, man, be reborn in its ashes. I want to unfold the glasses and make them see the sons and daughters. They abandoned to be bastards. Know that we grow like molasses. I point to the north, like Davy's Jones' compass. Just follow the sounds of trumpets and listen up. See, I write for love. For wind chimes when they dangle and jangle, moving passionately like two doing the tango. I write for the sweet taste of mangoes, because this is that tropical heat. Sun glistening, glistening on the beach, drinking coconuts under the cabana while I listen to the sounds of your sleep. Beauty like Cambodia, beauty like Cambodia. I write to the beat drums of runaway slaves engraving the etchings of oak trees so even as time passed, we last like classic oldies weathering the elements. See, I write for the essence of soul, for the old, because experience is wisdom and wisdom is gold. Behold, I write for the gorillas in the Congos, for the nomads in the jungles following the rhythm of the bongos. Man, I write for the wars and trench and battle, stretch out in the far corners of Asia, Burma, Malaysia, Cambodia, Afghan, Iran, Iraq, and deep Africa. I write for the souls lost in Attica. Man, I write for California, the golden state where we hold and wait, struggling to hold on to faith because they steady packing us in prisons till we old and gray. So I write for those in blue that's doing all day, the Hatchapi, New Folsom, Corker, and Pelican Bay, all the way to Susanville, high desert and back down this way, Calipat, Lancaster, Solidad, Ironwood, and so many more men built in the cesspools. So I write about what's less cool. Yeah, less fake. So let's take a minute of silence for the fallen and press pause. Okay, that's enough. Let's get back to the cause. Let's get back to these walls built to separate and generate hate, built to execute and induce waste. So I'll write from a place of pure base, all the five elements put together to produce faith. See, I'll write for men, women, and children. 
Anyone who felt alone, anyone who felt disowned, I write for the bones bearing in the country I call home. I write for you, the listener. So listen up. Take a step back and imagine the bigger picture. Because I write the real, so feel me. So, in conclusion, 2009, 2010, I was released. Upon my release, I was picked up by ICE, Immigration Custody Enforcement. Come to find out my refugee status, permanent resident, was not so permanent. I did a year there after 14 years of incarceration. Another year, that makes 15, and I was shipped back a returnee, you know, uh, the human rights guy. He said, change the perception. I know there's deportees, returnees before me, and I know they have this perception of us that we're all bad. We all came from a bad background. I'm here to change that perception. Thank you. Peace. Love.